Back again with another old samplers video. I got this one for you today. It's fairly cheap, not one of the most expensive samplers out there. Uh, and rightfully so, there isn't much inside of this sampler. I think probably the most interesting thing about it is the different sample rates that you can get out of it. Released in 94, if I'm not mistaken, just taking information off of the internet. There's some things inside it actually pretty advanced for the time like you could slice a sample inside of this, inside of this tiny little thing, you can divide samples. But yeah, but there really isn't much. The sequencer is pretty uh, poor. They call this a performance sampler, is that you just press record and then whatever you record into the sequence, it stays there. There's no overdub or anything. But really the interesting thing about it is, is the sample rate. I did take some samples and I'm actually gonna compare it as well with the lo-fi plugin, which I've thought it was really interesting as well. Anyway, let me show you uh, a little bit about the sampler. So you can only play four samples at a time in here. You can record stereo or mono, and that will reflect on the amount of time that you have to record. So if you go here into the system and you go here to the side, you'll have the grade of the recording, and that will be high, standard, long one, long two. You can pitch the samples right here. We've got some uh, things in here that we can change. If we want this to go uh, into gate mode or if we wanted to change it to but then it stops or you can just then we have the loop on or off it will loop the sample pretty basic uh, you can chop your sample here as well from start and the loop point as well and the end point uh, you have different banks you have bank C and D, but you can only access these three, which is C, D, and E, with a memory card, which I don't have, uh, but I can access these two pad banks right here. Then you have the utility. This is where you can delete a sample, truncate once you chop your sample, you can trim it, and then discard of the rest. And then we have the sequencer, which is a, a performance sequencer. There's no way to overdub over the sequencer or anything. So let's go into record a sequence. So sequence number one, override the sequence. Yes, I want to override it and it's at standby. So once you press a pad, it starts recording. And once you uh, press the record, it stops the recording. So standby, you have that memory showing you how much you have and you're still recording that's it so everything that i did uh, was recorded into the sequencer okay and then you just play it That's it. You have four sequences. Uh, you can change them right there. And that's that's pretty much the sequencer. As you saw, the sequencer isn't really much. I would rather just get a MIDI into this and trigger it via MIDI and sequence inside of another sampler that has a good sequencer. That's what I would do with this thing. So really the only thing is really the sample rate. And I have some examples for you right now. I'm gonna show you how they sound. I literally just uh, sampled two things, a chord, and I also sampled a drum loop. Okay. So I sampled this into the Roland and then back into the MPC. I have all the sample rates in here for the drums and the chord. Just Let's just listen to it. So that's the original. Now this is the highest at 44 kilohertz, basically the same thing. You hear, this, you hear some distortion in there, it's probably because I clipped it a little bit. Then we have 36 kilohertz. Very small differences, you, you, hard, you can barely notice it. So this that I'm playing right now, is at 20 kilohertz. You 
can already hear that the higher frequencies are just gone. Uh, and then there's the, the lowest sample rate, which is 16 kilohertz. That, that's where you really notice the difference. Not the huge difference. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but it's a 16-bit uh, sampler. So let's listen to the drums. This is the original. Then we go high, which is 44 kilohertz. Same thing. Then we go down to 36 kilohertz. You notice it a little bit on the snare, you have less high frequencies. Right, so this right here is at what? Uh, uh, 20 kilohertz? Okay, 22 kilohertz. Right, here you can really notice the difference. All right, and then we go into 16 kilohertz. Obviously, huge difference right there. And I think this is where the sampler really shines. But then I went for the lo-fi plugin because I was like intrigued to see if I could come close to um, this frequency, which is 16. So I went in and I uploaded the lo-fi plugin and I dropped it to 12 kilohertz. Still at 16 bit. It's not exactly the same thing, but they sound very close to each other. And it sounds crunchy as well, just like the one that I took from the MS-1. It has a beautiful crunch, I'll, I'll give them that. Uh, sampling it at 16 kilohertz, putting the drums through it, it sounds really nice. But you will need to buy a sampler like this because the lo-fi plugin comes really close to what I just took out of the rolling. Yeah, so you know, I, I like to do these type of things for the channel, just get old samplers and showcase them in, in the uh, in the channel. Some of them get a place in the studio, others don't, they go. And it might be what's gonna happen to this one. So this one, I might sell it, I don't know. I don't really wanna keep a lot of samplers in the studio that I don't use. It might actually go, I might sell it back. I did get it for 120, 110, I think around that price with the shipping cost as well. Unfortunately, no filters inside this. Uh, funny thing, uh, this comes right before my SP202 from Boss. So the 202 comes and replaces this. Uh, that's what I, again, take from the internet. So the 202 comes really after this one. And the, the 202 has that same thing of the Lo-Fi 1, Lo-Fi 2. I think they're exactly the same sample rates. I didn't compare the two. I should have compared the two because seeing that the 202 is the successor for this one, uh, but you know, I actually really like the 202 and the way it sounds. But uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't mention, this is the cool thing about it. It runs on batteries. And that was it. That is this episode of Old Samplers. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you like this type of content, me just going in searching for old samplers, let me know and I'll do more of these as well in the future. Thank you very much for watching. It was a pleasure doing this for you. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, peace.